Betta fish are one of the most popular fish in the aquarium hobby, but unfortunately, they've developed a reputation for not living very long. This is so wrong. Betas can live five to seven years if they're taken care of properly. So I've decided to do a top five video of why betta fish die. So you can get the most out of your fish and he or she can live to their fullest potential. The first thing we're going to talk about today may seem like common sense, but to new betta fish keepers, it's sometimes overlooked. And the first thing is water conditions. Betas are known for being low maintenance fish that don't require a lot of attention, like other fish in the hobby. But this isn't true. They need to be taken care of just like the other fish in the hobby. They need clean water that's treated with water conditioners. They need to be in a nice, warm, and cozy environment, and they like their water dark. What do I mean by dark? Well, I'm glad you asked. When we talk about dark water, we're talking about water that's treated with tannins. This could be from a natural source, like a catapa leaf, or it could be a product that is supplemented with catapa leaves, like dark water by Fritz. Dark water is for people that don't like the look of the leaves. It, you know, they can break down after a while and make your tank look a little messy. So how do you know if your water isn't up to standards for keeping a beta? Well, the easiest way would be to have a test kit. But if you only have one single beta, then getting a master test kit by API might be a little bit too expensive for you. And you're thinking, I paid more for this test kit than I even did for my entire tank. I get it, they're expensive and not everyone can afford them. And that's okay because I have another option for you and that is the test strips. All you have to do, dip that little test strip in the water, put it up to the chart. There you go, it's just as effective, trust me. But what if you don't have anything to test your water and you need something right away, but you just don't have it? What are you gonna do? Well, there are visual clues that'll tell you if your tank is out of whack. One of those would be the appearance of your tank. Does the water look brown? Is there algae everywhere? Is there green slimy stuff coming off the stuff in the tank? Well, the other thing would be the fish is a little sluggish. He's not acting the way he normally does and he's just laying around. If you answered yes to any of these, then it's time to get off your lazy butt and get to work. Regular maintenance for your beta tank is critical, but not only for keeping your tank nice and clean, but also for keeping your beta happy and healthy for a long time. So don't be lazy. This is another thing that's super common with beta keepers. They see these cute little beta fish in cups at the store on the shelf with no heaters in them and just assume that they don't need them. Well, let me tell you, if you're not heating up your beta tank, then that might be the answer to what your problem is and why your fish aren't living very long. So here's the deal. Betas originate from Thailand and other places in Asia that are really, really warm, like hot, very, very, very hot. Yes, these are fish that are great at adapting to different conditions, but let's think about it like people. Let's say that somebody lived in Southern Florida and they decided to move to Maine. And the first winter there in Maine, it was super cold to them and they just had a really hard time adapting to the climate. And the people in Maine are like, you know what? This is just <laughs> super mild. What are you talking about? If your fish was born and raised in Indonesia or Thailand and they're used to 82 degree weather and then they get put into your tank and it's 72 degrees, 
How do you think they're gonna feel? Not good. Maybe this is why fishing cups at the store look miserable all the time. Hmm. So you might be watching this and you're thinking, Lisa, but I have my beta in a vase on my bookshelf. How am I gonna fit a heater in it? Well, two things. First, they absolutely make heaters for tanks that are super small. And second, please get your beta a bigger tank. The small heaters are made for bowls and other tiny tanks, and they're pretty cheap. You can get them for $10 or less. So it should definitely be the first thing on your list to get for your beta. So here's the best way I know to make all of this make sense. Think about yourself. Seems to be a pretty common thing these days that people just think about themselves. Anyway. You're probably used to being in a room that's 72 to maybe 75 degrees. And what do you think would happen if you were put into a room that was just 62 degrees? It's not gonna kill you and you know what? It might actually feel good for a little while, but after a while, you're gonna slow down and probably be a little bit miserable. You'll be much more susceptible to catching a cold or even pneumonia. You're gonna lack energy you're gonna slow down, you're gonna start sniffling, and then you're just gonna feel like total crap. How long is it gonna be before you just can't stand it anymore? Again, you're not gonna freeze to death, but it's not gonna be a happy life. The difference is you can go somewhere warmer and you can get away from the drama, but your fish is stuck. Betas are tropical fish that need to be warm, period. If you're not providing yours with a heater, they're not gonna last very long. And please, we don't need people to say in comments, I live in India or somewhere warmer and I don't need a heater. We're not talking to you, obviously. I know as well as anyone that we like to spoil our betas. I take care of 400 of them, just saying. These fish become like our little buddies and they get put into smaller tanks where they sit by us for the most part of the day. Just like John's beta, he has his on his desk and he sits by him all, all day long. One of the things that's really common is the beta is sitting there next to you in his tank, staring at you constantly and you think he's hungry. So you throw some food in there and then a couple hours later you throw some more food in there and then, well, a few hours later you, well you know what I'm talking about. You get where I'm going? Obviously throwing food in the tank over and over and over and over again is a really bad idea because not only will your beta gorge himself, you're gonna have some really bad water conditions. More food equals more waste. More waste equals more ammonia. This is Fish Keeping 101. But there's something else that's super common, and that's putting in too much food at each feeding. Betas are tiny fish, and they can only eat so much. So if you throw 25 pellets in there, they're obviously not gonna eat them all, so what do you think happens to them? Leftover food rots, rotten food turns to ammonia. Here we go again. One of the staple foods that I feed to my betas is the extreme beta pellets. This is a no-brainer for me because my fish absolutely love it. But look at the size of the fish and look at the size of the pellets. It doesn't take very many to fill that fish's belly. When I feed my betas, I literally give them three or four pellets twice a day. You might be thinking, geez, you're starving them, but I'm not. This is more than enough for these little guys. Again, look at the size of them and how much they'll be eating. It's more than enough to fill them up without it being so much that it'll bind them up and have a bunch left over fouling up the tank. So don't fall into the trap of feeding them every time they look at you with those cute little eyes. Just when you feed them, do it sparingly. 
This is actually killing two birds with one stone. You're not overfeeding your fish and you're not contributing to bad water conditions, fouling up that water. Are you one of those people that think that betas have to be in tanks all by themselves? Well, I'm here to tell you that's not true. Betas do great with tank mates, but it's not without its share of challenges. And it's not that the beta is gonna pick on the other fish as much as it's the other fish that I'm more worried about picking on the beta. If you think about the most attractive thing about the betas, it's their long flowy fins. Well, these big fluffy fins can be targets for fin nipping tank mates, and that could be trouble. Injuries in fish are the same as injuries to us. If the conditions are poor, then the ability to heal is greatly reduced. This is something that can be a constant battle when you have tank mates with your betas, but it's really no different than any other fish. If you mix the wrong fish together, you'll have some that have huge targets on their backs. This is why it's super important to be selective of the fish you put with them. One of the things I recommend that if you have tank mates with your beta, then you should have a backup tank just in case your beta gets injured and he has somewhere to go and heal. It helps because you can get him or her isolated in a stress-free environment, which will help him heal faster. Plus, there's no threat of whatever fish injured him just doing the same thing over and over and over and over. If you don't do this, it's almost like the snowball effect. The fish gets injured, so you try to medicate him. Meanwhile, the other fish are still chasing him around, stressing him out. And the problem just keeps getting bigger and bigger until finally the fish just can't take it anymore and dies. Now, please understand this isn't me saying you can't have tank mates with your betas. I just want you to be really careful. Make sure to have a plan if he does get injured and be super cautious and super picky about the fish that you do choose to put with your beta. If you wanna see a video that we did about the best tank mates for betas, I'll put a card right here. The fish on this list should give you the least amount of problems. Stress is not only the number one killer of betas, but it's probably the number one killer of all fish. What causes stress for your betas? Well, everything we've already talked about. Poor water conditions, no heat, overfeeding, and certain tank mates are all causes for your beta to get stressed out. And to my knowledge, there really aren't any antidepressants for fish. Hmm. Fish antidepressants. We might be onto something. The thing is, if you're doing your job as a fish keeper, you shouldn't need to find antidepressants. But if you're afraid your fish might be stressed out, what would be some of the symptoms? Well, the first thing would be a loss of appetite. Betas are usually vigorous eaters. So if you see your fish isn't coming out at feeding time, and when you put food in there, he just kind of looks at it and pushes it around, it's time to get concerned. Also, if your fish is hiding a lot, Betas are the type of fish that like to explore and they're all over the place. So if you see them hiding behind a filter or hiding in the rock or just laying on the substrate and just not doing anything, then that's his way of sending you a red flag. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is check all of the things we've already talked about. Test your water parameters. Is the ammonia too high or are the nitrates way up there? If you don't have a test kit, then think about the last time you did a water change. If it's been a while, then, you know, do one. What's the temperature? Did your heater fail? Or did you move the tank to a spot that's real close to a window or one of your air vents and it's caused a huge change in temperature? Also, did you change his food or did you feed him too much? Is his tank mates harassing him? All of these things should be pretty easy to figure out. But what if all these things check out? Well, let's start looking at our own habits. 
Have you been leaving the curtains drawn in your huge window in front of the tank and it's getting pummeled with sunlight? Have you been having a lot of people over lately and there's been a bunch of people walking back and forth, turning lights on and off, little kids tapping on the glass? It shouldn't be hard to figure out and once you do, fixing the problem shouldn't be hard either. Just stop doing whatever stressing them out and get back on track with your maintenance so he's not swimming around in his own toilet water. So you're gonna get a bonus. You're gonna get six reasons why your beta dies instead of five. You didn't see that one coming, did you? This one is the worst because it's gonna seem like I'm trying to scare you, but I'm not. This is something that all fish keepers need to be aware of. And it's the worst part of fish keeping. And that's the issues that we can't see coming and we really can't do anything about, at least most of them. Issues like your city decided to do a clean out of their water system and put in 10 times the amount of chlorine they usually use. This has happened to us and we had no idea until it was too late. It wasn't with betas though. I did a water change in my discus tank that I also had 20 rummy nose tetras in. I got done and I walked away and only to come back 30 minutes later and every single one of my rummy nose were dead and they were stuck to the filter intake. Fortunately, it didn't affect my discus, but I was totally bummed. The only advice I could give on a situation like this is to pay attention to your water bills. That's usually where they'll announce they're doing those huge purges and make sure you give it a week or so after that before you do any water changes. Or I guess you could buy bottled water because it is a beta tank and it shouldn't be that much. There's also things like doing your routine house cleaning and spraying Windex or furniture polish around your tank. Wait, I thought I was supposed to be talking about things we don't see coming. Don't be an idiot spraying stuff around your beta tank. But then there's the bane of every fish keeper's existence and that's the dreaded tank leaking. Now, this is not something that's common in the beta world because beta tanks are usually really small and there's not enough pressure in them to cause leaks, but hey, you know, it can happen. The point is we can do everything right and we can try to make sure everything is perfect, but the truth is sometimes just bad things happen. You try your best to foresee issues that could possibly happen, but Unfortunately, no one's perfect. The best advice is to always have a backup plan. If your city is gonna bleach the water lines, buy a few gallons of water from the grocery store. Keep up with your maintenance and don't spray stuff around your tanks. Oh, and uh, another thing, if you have cats, make sure you keep the lids on your tanks really tight. Yeah, because I learned that one the hard way. So there you go. Hopefully this has helped you to understand the little things that will help your little beta live a long and happy, healthy life. The bottom line is don't be lazy, don't be stupid, and also subscribe to this channel if you wanna see more videos just like this. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.